Hi there, Dave here again, and today I'm going to be showing you how to replace a sound card in a desktop computer. I'll also be showing you which type of sound card to use for your computer. Now the first thing to do is take a look at the back of your computer case and see where your speakers are plugged into. Now if your speakers are plugged into one of these ports up here, then it's directly plugged into the motherboard, as you can see from this spare motherboard that I have. These ports are directly connected to the motherboard here. So if your speakers are plugged into one of these ports or ports similar to this, then your sound is being produced by an onboard sound chip on the motherboard. But if, on the other hand, your speakers are plugged into one of these slots down here, then, you, then it's plugged into a sound card, perhaps like this one, or it may look a bit more like this one instead. So the next thing to do is to see if you have a spare slot inside your case that will take a sound card. Let's take a look inside here. Now on this motherboard it has spare PCI slots and just here it also has a sound card already in there which that slot will become spare when we replace it later on. It's a bit easier to see on this motherboard. Here we have, these are all PCI slots. Now some motherboards have PCI Express slots. So you need either a PCI slot or a PCI Express slot. So if you're not sure which ones are which, just take a look at your motherboard manual or your computer manual and it will clearly explain which slots are which. So when you take a look in your motherboard manual, if it tells you that you have a spare PCI slot, then you'll need a PCI sound card for your computer. If you have a spare PCI Express slot, then you'll need a PCI Express sound card for your computer. Now these PCI Express slots, it may say in your manual that it's a PCI Express revision 1, 2 or 3, or it may explain that it's a 1x slot, 4x, 8x or 16x, sometimes written backwards as x1, x4, x8 and x16. Now all the PCI Express sound cards that I've seen have all been 1x. This means that you can take any PCI Express sound card and plug it into any PCI Express slot. And same goes with these PCI slots. If you have a PCI sound card, you can plug it into any PCI slot. And just by the way, you can't plug a PCI Express sound card into a PCI slot, and vice versa as well. Now I've just come a bit closer to the camera so that I can show you this brown slot here on the bottom of this motherboard. Now this slot here is actually a CNR slot. I can get that into the camera there. And it looks quite similar to a PCI Express 1X slot. But a PCI Express 1X sound card definitely will not work in this particular port. So I just thought I'd mention it in case you have something similar on your motherboard. But in your motherboard manual it will clearly explain which ports are PCI Express and which ones are PCI slots. Now there's two makes of sound card that I often recommend. One is Creative and the other is Zonar. Now there are other good quality sound cards out there, but those are the two that I often recommend. Now if you have a good sound card, the sound that you hear out of your speakers will be better quality. And the better your speakers are, the more you'll hear an improvement. Now I'll give you a quick example here. Years ago I purchased this sound card, which is a Creative X5 Extreme Music sound card, and this card replaced my motherboard's onboard sound. And I was using these speakers at the time, which aren't particularly expensive, they're around £45 at the time, but the difference in the sound quality was very, very noticeable. Suddenly all the sound came to life just by changing my sound card. Then there's the other end of the spectrum where you may not be so bothered about the quality of your sound. 
perhaps your sound stopped working in your computer and you just want to hear sound again. In that case you could buy a sound card like this one or similar to this which only cost around £10 and will do the job just fine. Now the sound cards tend to vary from around £10 up to about £200. Generally speaking, the more you pay, the better quality your sound card will be. Now here I have three speakers. This is known as 2.1 speakers. That is two speakers and the point one, if you like, is the subwoofer. Now, if you have speakers like these, then you'll need a sound card for 2.1 speakers. Now let's say you have six speakers, this will be known as 5.1 speakers, in which case you'll need a sound card that produces surround sound for at least that number of speakers. Now you can buy sound cards that produce sound for 7.1 speakers, in other words it can produce sound for eight speakers. Now if you have a sound card like this, it can produce sound for any number of speakers between two speakers and eight. Okay, now some sound cards need extra power from your power supply unit inside your case. Now I would say most sound cards don't require extra power. Most uh, have enough power as it is from the motherboard. But those that do require extra power, quite often they require a Molex power connector. Now, if you choose a sound card that does need extra power, just make sure you have the power connector that you need inside your computer case first. Next, it's a good idea to check the connection that you have between your speakers and your sound card. For example, this one on mine, I'll show you a close-up of this. This is a 3.5mm analogue plug. So if I want to use these speakers with a new sound card, then I'll need a sound card that has a 3.5mm analogue socket. These are used on most computers, but there are different types of sockets that you can get as well. Here's an example of another type of socket that your speakers may currently be plugged into. This is an SPDIF optical out port. So if your speakers are currently plugged into a port like this one, then you'll need to get a sound card with an optical out port to go with your speakers. There are other types of ports out there, but most computer speakers have a 3.5mm analogue plug or plugs. And most motherboards and sound cards have 3.5mm analogue ports. This is by far the most popular type of connection. Some sound cards have a front panel audio header, so you may find your new sound card may have a header along here somewhere, or perhaps along here. And this front panel audio header is used to connect up any ports, any sound ports on the front of your case such as microphone port or headphone ports. So if you do have ports like these on the front of your case, you'll find a cable that leads from the case and you can plug it into the sound card. Also, when you're choosing a sound card, make sure that sound card works with your Windows operating system. Some of the sound cards these days won't work with Windows Vista or Windows XP but most will work with Windows 7 and Windows 8. So once you have your new sound card, first of all we want to uninstall the old sound card, or if you're using your motherboard sound, your onboard sound, then we want to disable that. Okay, now if your computer is currently using the motherboard's onboard sound, then you'll need to disable that in Windows and in the BIOS. So follow this part if your computer is currently using onboard sound. To disable the sound in Windows, click on Start. Type Device Manager, then press Enter.
click on the arrow next to Sound, Video and Game Controllers. Right click on your sound device and select Disable. Next, we need to disable the sound from within the BIOS. How to get into the BIOS varies from one computer to the next, but this will be explained in your motherboard or computer manual. And, most computers tell you how to enter the BIOS at the bottom of your screen as your computer's starting up. It will say something like, to enter the BIOS, press the delete key. Sometimes it refers to the BIOS as the CMOS or setup. So it may say something like, to enter the setup, press the F1 key. So from when your computer is turned on, but before Windows starts up, keep pressing the appropriate key until the BIOS screen is shown. Once you're into the BIOS screen, take a look around and find your onboard audio. You may have to use the arrow keys on your keyboard to look around, or some computers allow you to use the mouse for this. Your onboard audio may be in a different location to mine. Once you've found it, disable it, then save your changes. Allow your computer to restart, then shut it down. OK, so that was how to go about disabling onboard sound. But if your computer is currently using a sound card, then here's how to uninstall it before we move on to installing the new sound card. So first, click on Start. Type Device Manager, then press Enter. Click on the arrow next to Sound, Video and Game Controllers. Right click on your sound card and select Uninstall. Now we can close this window. Then click on Start. Control Panel. Make sure Category is selected. Then click on Uninstall a Program. From the list that appears, find any programs that are associated with your sound card. Click on one of them, then click on Uninstall and follow any of the simple on-screen instructions. After uninstalling a program, you may be asked to restart your computer. If so, click on No. You may have one or two programs that are associated with your sound card, so just remove them one at a time until they're all removed. Remember that we're only removing sound card related programs here. Everything else can be left alone. Once you've done that, Shut your computer down. OK, once you've turned your computer off, take out any cables from the back of the case and just touch an unpainted part of the case for around 10 to 15 seconds just to ground yourself. Now open up your case and if you already have a sound card in there, we need to remove that first. Now yours may be like this one where it's screwed into place or you may have one that's clipped into place and you may also have cables that's attached to the sound card so you need to take those out as well if you do have any so you can just you can just rock this sound card out of the motherboard See? try and grab it by its edges and take it out now we can take our new sound card and plug that into that same space. Let's 
So you just need to rock the card in there and screw it or clip it back into place again. If your case has front audio ports, such as a microphone port or headphone ports, you may wish to connect those up directly to your sound card if your sound card has front audio headers or a header. The front port header on your sound card may be HD audio and the same with your ports at the front or the front port header on your sound card might be AC97 and the same with your ports at the front. If these two don't match up you can use a converter cable so you can still connect your front sound ports with your sound card. But remember not all sound cards have this header. So now we've installed the sound card we can close the case up and we can plug in our speakers into the new sound card. Now if you're using 3.5mm analog ports then you can follow this colour coding on the right. Now you may want to check your sound card manual for this because not all manufacturers follow this colour coding. Next you can plug in all of your other cables into the back of the case such as your power supply cable and your monitor cable and you can turn your computer on and install any software and drivers that need to be installed for your sound card. Now these quite often come on a disc with your sound card or you can go to your sound card manufacturer's website and download the drivers and software from there. Once your sound card's drivers and software are installed, right click on your speaker icon and select Playback Devices. Make sure your sound card is set up as the default playback device by right clicking on it and selecting Set as Default Device. The last thing to do is to spend a minute or two setting up the sound card software. You can normally find this by clicking on Start, then typing in the name of your sound card manufacturer. Mine's a creative sound card, so I'll type that in and click on Creative Audio Control Panel. Now your software might look very different to mine, but however yours looks, the main thing you want to do is to set the software to the correct number of speakers that you have. I have two speakers, so I'll set mine to two or 2.1 speakers. Now it's most likely that your software will have other settings that you may wish to explore. For example, your software might have a graphic equaliser, a Dolby on and off switch, or perhaps a sound crystalliser, and so on. And that's it, you're all set up. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, see you next time.